YouTube friends and fellow artists, or people who just like art. Um, I'm drawing this landscape, and mainly the house is the biggest part of the composition. Um, the house is Thomas Jefferson's house uh, called Monticello. It's a plantation as well. It's outside Charlottesville, Virginia. And this is about the drawing of it, not about the history of that. I work with oil-based colored pencils, and it's a polychromos set. As you can search that and find that. Um, on the tree on the right is a Crimson King maple, which is very purpley and reddish, including in the spring, I believe. And so I'm using a summery look. Um, so I used mauve for the purple, and red violet was a very useful color as well. You can start a drawing however you want, of course, but some people just work in very high detail in one area. I tend to move around. I did some of the tree, and then I moved to the house. Um, the trees, as you see them now, are pretty much done, but I made some additional changes. The main color on the shutters is pine green, which is my darkest green. If you want to draw in perspective, this is not the house to start with. It's a very complicated structure. There is very detailed information coming up about perspective, and I added lots of info in the video description on that as a summary, and that's really intended for artists. I discovered the color that was perfect for brick was the color called flesh. Do not use it for skin, but it's perfect for brick. This brick wall is a place I, where I started the house on the left side. It's fairly rare to use pure black in a drawing. It's just too dark. In my reference photo, the area on the left side, that porch, was very, very dark, and so I did use pure black there. Hello, George. I don't know who that is. Be sure to pause on the next slide. If you're an artist especially, if you want to read over what's involved in drawing in two-point perspective, this slide goes into all that. And part of what you do when you draw in two-point perspective is look at the angles of the building in particular. You want all the lines of your drawing that are vertical to stay vertical. That's actually very helpful. So be sure to see the video's description if you want more information on drawing in one or two-point perspective. Let's talk about color again. One of my go-to colors is this brown called Burnt Sienna. It's a medium brown. It's used in a lot of the shadows. It's used in many of the tree branches and the tree trunk, though there's a lot of warm gray in the tree trunk as, as well. The brown you'll see on the edging, if you zoom in on the um, soil that is at the bottom of the tulips, is just all over the place. Many colors, you can use this brown to darken them instead of using black. A uh, discovery that might help you is it tends to turn reds purple, so you're better off just choosing a darker red instead of adding brown to red, unless you like purple. I can show you my almost finished drawing and some of the things I'm hesitating about, and later on in this video you'll see how I decided to finish it. Spring at Monticello. That's the interim title. I chose spring because I saw in my photo there were some interesting spring elements. Let's take a look. You can see my main reference photo is my own photo I took several years ago, at least I think 10 years ago. Tulips only come out in spring, and because this tree on the right side, I decided I first replaced it with a different tree and thought, no, I've got to change it. I drew a a Japanese maple, which really only get about this big, and I drew it this big. And I was starting, I'm like, wait. So I had to change the colors, and I found a maple, and this actually ends up being the tree that it is actually there anyway. Um, Crimson, Crimson King maple. They turn very bright red in the fall, but before that, they have purplish leaves. I tried to make it somewhat spring-like by making some of the branches more interspersed. We can see the sky. More of a spring green going on here than, than the other greens. Instead of looking at it straight on from the front, where you have the same thing going on both sides of the building, which is how this is laid out, you have a very stark angle. You're looking at the side of the building, then the back entrance, but from straight on, facing this grand entry here. 
but I have it where from the side, which you do see a few photos like that. Um, I found some online, which are sort of like secondary backup photos. You can have some coffee with me if you want, see? There's a better glimpse of what I was talking about. But this one, coincidentally, is also in spring. But look at the sparseness of this. You can tell it's more springtime, like earlier spring. I needed secondary photos because my photo is unclear enough that I couldn't see what was going on. And of course I can blow this up or go to one of the other photos I found. There's that. See, it, it was, I saw in this one. Well, it is a crimson king maple anyway. Look at those purple leaves. Sun shining directly this way, hitting this first. Hard to tell the difference between this, in my reference photo, between the dome and where the sky starts. The tree, I moved this tree to the back and a different tree. It shows you the roof by having the tree there. For a landscape to show perspective and distance, having something more detailed in front and then something less detailed behind it and smaller usually, like front, behind, behind, the detail gets less as you go back. Unless you'd want to go away from realism. Tree behind, you can see some of the branches, but the leaves blend all together in one more monotone flat color. And then the very distance, there's no blank sky here. There's a tree back there somewhere, and then showing through the fence. A branch coming way out and shooting toward you would be super detailed. That's what I tried to do in this area. I don't know if that works. Same tulips over here is here. And then they end here with very detailed closer up tulips. I could barely see in my photo, it's very whited out. I made this more clear, though it's lighter. Can't see the brick. You can see the brick. Um, brown marks where I created brick, a brick-like look. This is gonna be appear a more uniform color. Shadow branches falling on the tree. You like the shadows? On the ground? I didn't want these shadows ruining what I was trying to do here, which is focused on these tulips. And so I moved them back. These tulips are like over here on the sides outside the picture. There are some around the tree though. And there, well, there are some there, but though all the ones here, I, I moved and put them there. I did not want all blue sky and green grass look. So having the tulips be more numerous helped that idea. I blacked out the sky being blue sky look with mostly trees and clouds. If you look carefully, you can see that. I added a woman here. Why? These ceilings are so tall. They're unbelievably and unnaturally tall. I needed some perspective to show um, how tall this is by putting something else there. The tree doesn't help you with that. I added bright colors so that it would match the tulip look. So she's a big tulip. I moved the tree over for fun to get it in the picture so that part is behind and parts in front. But I moved it closer and played with that. This fence thing is weird on top of the, but that's what it is. It's there across the whole building. I got to finish that over here. But you can see through and see the building behind it. In fact, it's clearer in my picture than in the photo. These are all hand-drawn, drawn, and this is slightly non-circular. It's more oval. Then it, straight on, it's going to be pure circle. Then at an angle, circles will be ovals. This is even an oval. An oval that goes stretches toward you because you're looking this way. Look at the shadow here. I made that stronger. There's a slight difference between this and this in the photo. And because my photo was imperfect, I decided I'm going to make it stronger. There's too many reds to choose from, but I guess I just had to put them on test paper and test out the reds and pick out which of the 10 reds I was going to use for this. I made some final changes on my landscape and house drawing, and um, I'm going to go over those with you. They're all improvements. No negative changes occurred. Let's take a look. The white I filled in with gray, not blue, not blue on top of gray, but just the gray. There's some there. And all of the branches are clearer 
because I went over all of them and made, I made both the leaves greener throughout the tree and the branches. I added more browns, sienna brown. You'll recognize it in many other places. This shadow is brown. So there's a lot of that brown in there. It's all darker, shows up better, a big improvement. I did add more detail here where it got muddy with the sky, blue-gray, but also there were some dark patches here. I got rid of them best I could by covering them up by the second branch coming out toward you. There's one there. It was a great way to clean up that muddy mess to have another one come over. I made the sky somewhat bluer in this, well, actually quite a bit bluer in this area. That helped this roof to come out and show up much better. I made these leaves a bit more colorful as well. I did that mostly with this violet red color. This I did decide to fill in with um, a lighter green. I wanted this curve to stay because I was playing with like a modern look as you went to this corner. This starts the curve, this imaginary line, which is real in this picture, along the grass then the same curve of the this edge of the sidewalk, then this edge, then the brown edge, and then finally the tulip row. This is such the pure whitest white area here with the sun coming this way, but the main experiment is using yellow as a darker version of white. So I was just playing with that because I didn't want another creamish brown color going across here. And it kind of adds to the idea of sun coming down, but it's not as so brilliant white that it's pure white white. That's why I picked yellow as to make this first row of squares here that you can see in the pattern of the building in this wood area here. And then here you have a darker yellows and this is brown oak, ochre, something like that. And that finished the yellow there and then shadowy browns here for the darkest area. I've had time crunch lately and I'm kind of, the art goals are really challenging that I put on myself as well as finding the time to edit vlogs has been difficult. And then the, with the usual other things going on in life. So that, and I've just had not as much energy to do the editing part. So I don't think I will be uploading more than every two weeks, like twice a month. I think that's a reasonable goal for me to reach. And I'm going to hope to do that. And we'll see what happens with that. All right. I will see you in the next one. All right. Bye.